It is James Governor, co-founder of Redmonk. I'm here for another Redmonk conversation. And I'm super happy that today I uh, have with me Emilio Salvador from GitLab, a VP of DevRel and Community. And we're going to be talking a little bit about developer productivity and AI. Obviously, those things are coming together at the moment. And I think that's, that's a key issue. So, uh, Emilio, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining the show. What exactly do you do at GitLab? Hey, James, first of all, thanks very much. Super nice meeting you. And thanks very much for giving me the opportunity to sit down with you and discuss this, you know, um, uh, super relevant topic like nowadays. My role, as you said, at GitLab is the, the vice president of developer relations. I'm tasked with all uh, our community and developer programs efforts. My team is basically tasked with evangelizing GitLab as the most uh, advanced and secure DevOps platform. And I, I also task with getting our community to contribute back to our platform, GitLab. Okay, great. So that's the community side. So let, let's jump in. I mean, here's the thing. I have been watching uh, you know, a lot of uh, presentations from vendors, from people in the industry, and they're saying things like, ah, oh, with our Gen AI tool, we're now 23% more productive. And it's not entirely clear to me that that's a sort of a, how do we get so reductive a, a metric? Um, I mean, A, I'd like to ask, like, is that how you see generative AI? And, you know, a little bit of a leading question, given that you have been thinking about this, possibly having a framework for thinking a little bit more broadly uh, about uh, developer experience and developer productivity. You know, do those metrics make sense? And how are you looking to measure developer productivity and how should customers be thinking about the opportunities around productivity and generative AI? It's, uh, James, it's a really great question. And we've, we've put a ton of energy and, and thought behind it. In fact, we just published a white paper on the topic, you know, trying to explain our customers how we are approaching developer productivity in the context of Gen AI. Mm -hmm. You know, as you said before, we all hear all day long is that, hey, with Gen AI, people are going to increase developer, increase productivity in general, not just developer productivity by 50, 60, 70%. You know, eventually mm -hmm. I'm getting to a point where I believe that, oh, I'm no longer needed, right? So uh, we ask ourselves that question, how should we think about productivity? Uh, and, and as engineers, sometimes we tend to focus on just one number, one metric, one thing that is going to solve every single problem and a number that we can, you know, that we can play with. And the reality, and especially when you think about developer productivity, it is not a single number. It is not a single metric. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are multiple elements. Some of them are not even technical to factor in when you think about developer productivity. So uh, there's been plenty of research on that topic from multiple companies. There's a couple of frameworks, you know, that people are super familiar with. Yep. And, uh, and we are coming up with probably a simpler approach to it that helps us think about developer productivity. But I don't think there's, there's a clear answer to that, to that problem. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, to a point, we, we've clearly got people that we... Um, no, I, I think you know the appliance of science. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Uh, clearly, the work um, in and around sort of uh, the Dora report and the later work uh, that Dr. Nicole Forsgren has done, trying to understand the, the the opportunity in terms of developer productivity. I think I, I mean I think honestly, where we are as an industry right now, Emilio, is, is this is definitely something that we all uh, need to think about because we understand. Uh, that developer productivity is important, but measuring that and, and importantly, like deciding what to optimize for is something that is an industry that is up, is up for grabs and or something we need to work on. So, Emilia, why don't you tell me a bit about how you're thinking about the value of developer productivity and developer teams, engineering teams, and, and, and perhaps something that, that, um, you know, we, 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 we mentioned that you're publishing a paper. What does that say? What's, what should, what should uh, the end user be thinking about uh, in terms of, of AI and productivity? So our view on that is, is simple. I mean, we see Gen AI, you know, as a tool that is going to help enable and enhance 
you know, the work that developers do on a, on a daily basis. There's no question about that, right? Uh, developer productivity, it goes beyond, beyond that idea, mm -hmm. right? Is that if I could do that analogy is as, hey, how, a painter, is that how do you measure painting productivity? Can you do that by the number of paints, you know, someone can produce on a daily basis? Yep. No, there are other things, you know, to factor in. So um, we've, we've been thinking a lot, you know, about this problem. And then we, we ended up thinking with a simple, a, a simple framework, framework on, on three different dimensions, three different axes. We call it the three T's okay. because it talks about tasks, time, and team. Tasks, time, and team. Those are the, the dynamics that I need to think about. That is correct. When we, when we think about most of the people, when they think in terms of productivity, they always go to tasks. They try to measure individual things by themselves, mm -hmm. right? I have, you think about developers, people may think of, hey, the number of pull requests, the number of bugs right. fixed, the number of lines of code, I mean, you know, a developer we, writes. We, we do, and we've, we've been talking to enterprises and they are doing some of that. It, it's, it's, it's sort of sledgehammer metrics. Uh, yeah, lines of code. Um, is that really the best uh, measure of productivity? It is not, uh, but it, it's, um, I, I keep saying one thing. The problem is that it's not only that you have metrics or numbers, mm -hmm. is that how you use them. Because eventually, if you think about those numbers and you use them to set goals, then people will find a way to game the system, mm -hmm. right? Tell me what you want me to achieve and I will overachieve it, right? Lines of code is that, oh, am I, my, is my performance based on the number of lines of code that I write? Mm -hmm. I can write thousands of lines of code just to solve, you know, uh, the simplest problem that you can think of, right? Um, so it is not so much, you know, about the task itself and the metrics, but also how you think about them and how you use them effectively as a way to look at performance in a more strategic and holistic way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so times, tasks, and teams. And how do we, how do we measure that? Where, where are we getting the numbers from? Is this, is this telemetry? Are we doing surveys? Is, is this, is this it, data from the platform? What, what does that look like? It, it, well, first of all, it has to be a combination of, of all the above. Right, because otherwise you will not be able to get a complete picture. Event, I mean, if you want to focus on tasks, from I mean, whatever task you're focused on, from hey, lines of code, number of bugs fixed, or anything else, mm -hmm. eventually that is something that the system can provide. Um, can provide you. When you think about, for example, team or time, time Dora Dora provides an excellent framework, mostly based on time. Mm -hmm. You know, on you know, on number of times. I mean, your team uh, deploys yep. uh, uptime, changing time. But there are elements that are extremely relevant in the context of team yep. that you cannot obtain unless you run a survey, right? And that also gets tricky because surveys are tricky. Are tricky. You know, there's a timing component. There's a, there's a difference on the way you frame the questions. There's a different way of how people from different different environment, different cultures answer to the same question. Mm -hmm. How do you establish a baseline? You know, it gets really complicated. And then that's why, you know, the approach to this has, has to be like thoughtful and strategic. I mean, it's not about just coming up with, hey, are you happy about doing what you're doing? And, uh, and then expect a one to five answer. Okay. So, I mean, I, I think when I, when I look at this question, and as you say, it's, it's going to be a mixture of, 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 you know, different ways of measuring. Some of this is to a point. Um, the, the the time questions mean time to recovery. Um, you know, we 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 think about uh, how often uh, we are shipping, how often we are deploying. How are some of the way? How do you measure some of the 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 aspects around just just team performance that are not time? Talk a bit about like tasks or you know, if you think about the three T's. So we've understood that, that time uh, may be, uh, you know, a measure, but what are some of the ways that you're able to measure some of the other considerations in the framework as you see it? 
Uh, well, probably the easiest ones are always the ones connected to tasks. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you can reduce things to individual tasks and then assign, you know, a number to them. I, I gave you a few examples before. Yep. Uh, although I, I don't advise anyone to use them. Like, for example, lines of code, number of pull requests, number of bugs fixed. Uh, uh, we we, had, we had an organization, we were talking to people, and they were measuring how many microservices were built. And that seemed like the worst measure I'd ever heard. In, in an industry that's measuring a lot of bad things, the idea that we would measure the number of microservices as a value um, and, and sort of, uh, you know, as a goal didn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense because at the very end of the day, what you're looking at is the outcomes versus, mm -hmm. sorry, outputs versus yeah. outcomes. Eventually, you need to establish a connection to some of the, of the, of the, of the business priorities. Mm -hmm. Your, your ultimate goal is either to drive adoption, drive, drive revenue, or drive user satisfaction. Yep. And then you have to establish a connection with that. That should be your ultimate goal. Your goal is that, hey, number of microservices that you've been able to build over the last three months, that's irrelevant, you know, can be one or a thousand, and yet you, you wouldn't have achieved anything with them. Okay. And that's the entire point about thinking about productivity, not in terms of individual metrics, but in, time, in, um, in, a, in a more holistic way that connects that back to the business. I think this and is you so use some... important, Emilio, because this gets to me, one of the things that we've been really surprised by at Redmonk, the idea that an enterprise would be concerned with spending, spending $20 a month per developer in terms of generative AI and the values it would bring in terms of their productivity. Because to us, it, 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 if we think about what we're trying to do in developer productivity and an application that will do that, we're trying to enable developers to become more product productive, more proficient. I mean, there's a couple of ways of looking at this. One is just the basics of like, wait, if you save somebody 20 minutes because they were able to look something up or they were able to... Uh, 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 be, be, be guided, uh, through the creation of an issue, uh, perhaps, uh, the, 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 the interaction between two people in a pull request, doing a better job describing why it would solve that problem. The idea to me that we would worry, I mean, even in a large developer population, I mean, I'm assuming I'm a bank of 10,000, uh, developers strong. Um, but the idea that I would worry about spending $20 per developer, doesn't really make sense to us at Redmond because we're like, well, actually, what is the cost of time saved? And that's one of the ways of, of, of thinking about productivity. Another one is this. Um, there's a guy called Simon Willison. Uh, he is one of the people doing a, a great job of tracking generative AI and the benefits it has. And he looks at this as a question of like, what are all the things I wouldn't have done because it would take too much time? So supposing, I mean, he's building a platform called Dataset. Um, it's, it's, it's like the opportunity cost. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Opportunity cost. So he's building this platform Dataset, and it's all about like pulling together data in order that, and he, he started from a, um, a citizen journalism perspective, uh, developer, to citizen, citizen journalist. But his thing was like, look, at any given time, there are going to be five or 10 things that a developer may be thinking, hmm. What if I could build a tool that would make me more productive in building the platform or in supporting the platform? And generally, they're like, you know what? Oh God, I'm going to have to go and learn that, like, you know, that Swift library, or I'm going to have to learn that JavaScript framework. That's not so. Oh, I, I don't quite understand the nuances between Angular and React in this place. It's an issue. If you're able to shortcut that, so that the developer could say, actually, I'm going to have a discussion with uh, the, the AI, I'm going to begin to solve a new problem. You, you, you become in an environment where instead of it being uh, a, a blocker, you got all of these new opportunities. And for me, Emilio, I, I've been thinking about it as like the introduction of the cloud. No need to ask for permission. Um, uh, the, the developer can, can get work done. Now, I think that you, you, you kind of see it apparently, you know, you think about it a little bit differently. It's not just the cloud, it's serverless. Like the, 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 yep. the, the productivity enhancement and opportunity goes well beyond just, oh, code to cloud and what that looks like. 
It does. It does. And I could not agree more with you. If we, if we think about, uh, about it at the individual level, I'm, I'm a thousand percent with you. That's the beauty of serverless. You know, Lambda as an example is that, hey, write your function and then it runs. Forget about everything else. You don't need to spend any time on anything else. Mm-hmm. The, the, the productivity increase there is huge. Absolutely. If everything else around you remains the same. It's a couple of fact, uh, the things that we need to factor in. One is that development, especially in large enterprises, is a team sport, right? Yep. Is that, hey, um, it's like um, you can be extremely productive, you know, or increase developer productivity, people writing code by a thousand percent, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to deploy a thousand times faster. You know, there, there are multiple links, you know, across that journey that you also need to optimize for. Right. Google did a, a piece of amazing research around, you know, factors that can help predict developer productivity. And if you go through them, most of them were not technical. They had to be with the work environment. You know, they had to be with the project people were working on, the peer support, access to documentation. So. My, my point around this is, unless you consider all those other elements, yeah, you might be able to um, increase developer productivity at the individual level right. with one particular task, but then nothing else is going to change. And then your, 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 and your overall productivity is going to suffer because of that. Okay. So let's, let's sum up a little bit. We've established that some of the metrics are brute force metrics, not going to be, not necessarily going to be so helpful in truly understanding whether the organization is being effective um, from a, a developer productivity perspective. Um, we've got the opportunity of, of AI and generative AI in making developers and people working with them more productive in various areas, whether it might be, you know, describing bugs, uh, describing issues, LLMs are, are pretty good at this stuff. So if we think about the interaction between what does productivity mean? You've got three T's. If we think about where GitLab is in terms of LLMs and development tools, like what should developers and your customers be most excited by? What should they be looking at? What's your call to action in terms of taking advantage of a better development framework and thinking about that in terms of AI? I think that my my, my advice to to existing customers is, hey, number one, don't believe everything you read. Number two, take this as a strategic project, right? And then is that see the best way and the most strategic approach to apply Gen AI along your entire software development life cycle. Mm-hmm. Number one. Number two, keep in mind that there are organizational factors and team elements that you also need to consider. Yep. Right? And then do that in a thoughtful way. Not because someone at the top said, oh, this Gen AI is going to be fantastic. We're going to increase productivity by 50%. No because that's going to create basically the opposite effect. And in fact, what you're going to see is that some pushback from existing teams, because uh, they will not be, even be willing to try to try the new tool set because, because they, they may see that as a threat. So I think that the, the advice here is that take these like, like, like the cloud, having a single developer back in the day using serverless was amazing. That person could prove that they could do things in no time, mm-hmm. but for, for your entire organization to take full advantage of the cloud, that required a ton of transformations internally, culturally, you know, and then in terms of skill sets as well. Okay. So skill sets, um, you know, Gen AI needs to match that. Um, yeah, I think from my perspective, uh, looking around the industry and certainly looking at, at, at GitLab in the the broader context of the software delivery lifecycle. It's not just about a developer. It's about a lot of different constituencies. Um, right. More focusing on development as a team sport uh, rather than just sort of individual developer and making them more productive. And I think basically that has to be the right approach. 
Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how the three T's lands. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how your customers begin to adopt uh, the generative AI tools that you're building. And here we are. Uh, we are kicking off 2024. We've all got a lot of work to do. And I'd just like to say, Emilio, thank you so much for joining us today. And that's a Redmond Conversation. Thanks, everyone, for joining. And by the way, if you've got a question for Emilio, let us know. Reach out to Emilio if necessary. But like, subscribe, share the conversation. If you're using GitLab, we'd love to know what you think. The new functionality is there. So like, subscribe, get on board. Thank you, Emilio. And uh, let's crush it in 2024. Let's crush it, James. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.